Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jérôme Delay, and I'm the head of the entertainment division at Twin Midair. And I am so proud to introduce Sir Lenny Henry to keynote our newly expanded diversity program. He is certainly the right person for the job. He is a beloved, award-winning British comedian, writer, actor, and a tireless campaigner for a number of charities that include issues relating directly to diversity. In particular, he's, been, he's long been at the forefront of advocating to make British broadcasters address diversity on the air. Following Sir Lenny's remark, the diversity program continues with a session in Auditorium A, featuring producers and broadcasters who are pushing for more inclusiveness in the creation of bold content that appeals to a global audience. And last night, at the inaugural Diversify TV International Excellence Award, we recognize the work of so many people doing so. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the sponsor of the diversity program. They are ANE Networks, Viacom, Ebony Live TV, Diversify TV, and our partners, Franklin Ray. Sir Lenny Henry's speech will be followed by a conversation moderated by my good friend Ali May, who is a writer, broadcast journalist, and social media guru for Media Heart. So please join me in welcoming on stage Sir Lenny Henry. Good morning. Am I facing the right way? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lenny Henry, and I'm going to talk to you about diversity in television. No, wait, don't leave. Uh, I was incredibly excited when MIPCOM asked me if I would give a speech today because I feel the argument for how and why we need more diversity in television needs to move on. In the past few years, since we've been campaigning, the focus has been on the moral arguments for diversity. Why more diversity in television is better for society. Why more diversity in front of the camera is needed so that people can see their lives and their realities reflected back at them. I've also argued that there is more, there's a more desperate need for more diversity behind the camera. Now, it might sound silly, but women are not just the same as men in skirts. Black people are not just white people with browner skin. And a disabled person is not just the same as an able-bodied person who just happens to be in a wheelchair. People have different experiences. They have different life stories. They see the world from different perspectives. And so the diversity of the people behind the camera shapes the stories they want to tell and how they want to tell them. Without diversity and inclusion behind the camera, certain stories are not being told. The histories of our di disparate society are not being recorded. And in the end, the way we are governed will only favor the people whose stories and concerns the politicians hear about. Imagine a world where you never saw people like yourself, never saw your culture, or never saw your life experiences portrayed on television, the most popular and influential medium of our age. This is what our industry does repeatedly through its employment practices and output. It tells those of us who are absent that our lives and our stories don't matter. It makes all the talk of inclusion and integration and cohesion ring hollow. The need for diversity in front of and behind the camera is urgent for the social fabric of society. Now, over the last few years, I have argued this along with others, and I think it is an argument we are slowly winning. This year, the British government wrote into the BBC's charter that for the first time in its history, diversity should be a core objective. All of Britain's major broadcasters have signed up to better monitoring of their diversity, both in front of and behind the camera. Consequently, there'll be more transparency and it will be evident who's failing and who is succeeding. 
every major political party in the UK has publicly called for more diversity in television and the media. The campaign for diversity seems to be winning the political argument. We have the moral high ground and people are listening to us. There's just one thing. The lack of diversity and inclusion in television is still a huge problem. Here's a few facts. Just 9.5% of people working for BBC Studios, that's the part of BBC that actually makes programmes, are black or Asian. 9.5%. And when it comes to people in senior positions, that number drops to 6.1%. But it's not just a BBC problem. In Britain, the TV industry has rolled out a scheme called Project Diamond to monitor the diversity of who actually makes the programmes. But right now, there's an argument between the trade unions and the broadcasters. The trade unions have requested statistics on the diversity of primetime TV. The broadcasters say they can't do it. No, -uh, no. The reason the numbers can't be published? There are so few black and brown people working on these programs that it will inadvertently identify them and therefore breach their privacy in law. That's right. The number of non-white people working on primetime programs in the UK is so low, they can't even publish the data. In fact, non-white people working in primetime TV are so rare, David Attenborough came across three dodos and a unicorn before he found one. <laughs> Despite all our victories, diversity in television is in a critical condition. And that is why today I want to propose a new argument for diversity and inclusion, and MIPCOM is the perfect place to present it. Now, as you know, MIPCOM is the world's biggest television market. It says so on Wikipedia. This is where deals are done. This is where the artistic world of television creatives collides with the cold reality of hard cash. This industry, as my friend told me last night, isn't called show friends. It's called show business, baby. If television is a business, which it is, right here at MIPCOM is where you find its beating heart. Fact is, we cannot make television without money. And if we want diversity to actually work, it has to make financial sense. Now, I'm very aware that all these good intentions and beautiful words are useless if they don't make a difference to the bottom line. So today, I'm going to talk to you about one big idea. Tax breaks for diversity. Yeah, that's right. Tax breaks for diversity. While I love the fact that politicians today support the idea of diversity and inclusion, I actually want them to change the business model of how television is actually made. I want them to be like everybody else in this room and realize that television is a business, and that means we need to think about the bottom line, profits and losses. Nothing focuses the mind of a businessman or woman more than money. And I'm not the only person thinking like this. Early this year, a first-of-its-kind tax incentive to boost the number of women and ethnic minority TV writers and directors was passed by the New York State's legislature. The bill will set money aside from the state's budget to provide tax credits for television productions that increase diversity and inclusion in certain key roles. Now, it still hasn't been passed into law by the state governor, but already this bill is making waves. This bill has set the templates for a nearly identical piece of legislation being considered by California's Film Tax Incentives Program. The California State Legislature began debating this in February. But we don't even have to look to the US, we don't even have to look there to see how tax incentives could change the way diversity and inclusion is viewed by the television industry. Britain has its own tax relief system encouraging investment in both film and television. Yeah, it does. In July, the British government revealed check this out, that it paid out almost £600 million in tax relief. £600 million in tax relief. I said it again because it got good to me. Last year, to the makers of films and big-budget TV productions that passed a cultural test that qualified them as British-made. Now, this has not just been good for producers and accountants trying to balance the books. It's been brilliant for jobs and the creative industry as a whole. Employment has been 
No, employment has risen 5% year on year in the British creative industry for the last four years, compared to just 1.2% for the rest of the job market. Now, I'd love to be able to tell you that the number of black and Asian people working in television has gone up 5% year on year since we've been campaigning, but unfortunately, that is not the case. But there is a way forward. Currently, in the UK, if you're a producer, to qualify for tax relief, you have to pass a cultural test of Britishness. Imagine if instead your business had to pass a diversity and inclusion test. This could work everywhere. Now, you're all business people here. We all know that this has the potential to change the diversity and inclusion argument overnight. Now, <clears throat> the tax break could perhaps be implemented in one of two ways. First, if your TV production were to be deemed diverse, you would not pay tax on that investment or you'd pay at a reduced rate. That would encourage investment in diverse dramas and other high-cost programs and really help productions to raise money. Or, alternatively, a diverse production pays less tax. That could be in national insurance contributions, corporation tax, or anything associated with the production. Now, I would stress that for any production to qualify for a tax break, it must have diversity both in front of and behind the camera in key roles. A black assistant researcher and exotic best friend of the lead actor is not cutting it. The usual solution, by the way, rolled out by the broadcasters when they're attempting to address the diversity problem, I don't know if they do this where you are, is to offer more training. More training! We'll do more training. That's a good thing, isn't it? We'll have more training. More training's good. Give them more training. Get them in. Train them. That's what they need. Blacks, Asians, minorities, ethnics. More training they need. Give them more training. Three years ago, when I gave evidence to the UK Parliament, I said Idris Elba went to the States not because he needed more training, he just needed a break. Today I'm saying that TV executives, that's you guys, don't need more lectures on why diversity and inclusion is, good, is a good thing for our industry. I think we're all on the same page with that now. Like Idris, you guys just need a break. Only in your case, you need a tax break. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Diversity is essential. I still believe that the moral imperative to increase BAME diversity in television to create a better society is the most important argument. I still believe that the broadcasters should ring fence money to produce diverse television, just as they ring fence money for other important program genres such as children's or news. We want the same as Peppa Pig, damn it. But I also believe that television is a business. If we want to effect a lasting change, not just in the diversity of content, but also in every strata of production and management, we must look at how productions are funded and taxed. So to misquote a line from the American Revolution, less taxation for more representation. Let's all join the diversity revolution. Thank you for listening. Boy, you've got a day ahead of you. There's all kinds of diversity stuff coming up, but before we do that, we've got a Q&A thing that hopefully will um, explicate some stuff about my career and things. And the person who's going to be the interlocutor, the dragon, the inquisitor, please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome the dandy in the purple jacket. He looks like a varicose vein with legs. <laughs> Mr. Ali May, give it up, y'all. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, Alec. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, please. I thought after that introduction, I had to do a lap. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is the day I got introduced by Sir Lenny Henry. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. What a lovely thing. Do you know when I first came across you? Is this a... It was early 90s. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. Okay, it's good. very appropriate. I was a kiddiewinkle in Iran. And I watched The Chef translated into Persian. How was that? It was fantastic. And I... I you Still know, my voice. I know it was Persian, but I don't know. I don't I, speak Persian. I didn't know. Else. I didn't know your voice. That's the thing. See, oh, okay. I saw a Persian speaking Lenny Henry. And you were fantastic. <laughs> so... 
I, I better call that guy. Uh, we need him here today. Shall we do this in person? <laughs> Can you do it? باشه چرا که نه من فارسی حرف میزنم حالا ببینیم شما چی میگی لنی tell me one thing before you speak in Persian <laughs> throughout your career <laughs> that would be weird if they made you do your own translation for your programs uh, that would be fun huh mm. um, throughout your career have you seen the state of representation fluctuate or has it always been a shade of dire and disturbing uh, well in Britain I can only speak from, by the way, all of these things are me waving my flag from where I stand. It, it's um, interesting with diversity because it's, for, it's about inclusion as well. It's about everybody, but I speak from my perspective. Um, when I worked at the BBC, when I first went to work at the BBC in the, the mid-70s and then the early 80s, I was pretty much the only black person in a 10-mile radius, I think. Uh, well, there was me and the, the security guys on the door and the women in the canteen. They were the only people of color in the entire building. Um, and for 35 years, I never had a meeting with a, an executive that looked like me or like you, um, ever. Um, so it, it's been a very slow curve, and I think it has improved a little bit, but there's still a mighty long way to go. So, you know, we met uh, last week for lunch and to prepare for this wonderful session uh, in a BBC building. Four security guards existed there and all four of them were brown. Yeah. And in the canteen where we sat, there were about 60 people, would you say? And you and I were the only brown people. And I was just a bloody visitor. I'm not pointing a finger at just the BBC. I think this is a, an no, industry-wide thing. industry-wide. This is everywhere. Everywhere you go. So, I, and you know, it, it kind of being in that position, and you kind of noted it. I said, look around us. Uh, that, that, I think that's quite hard. That's quite hard. It's all right. <clears throat> I think we just have to keep working at it. You know, water can reduce a rock to dust, but it takes a gazillion years. Um, I'm hoping that, and what we're all hoping in the diver diversity activism uh, campaign is that it doesn't take a million years to make people realize that... Uh, there is a unlevel playing field. These things take time. And what's been great is in the last couple of years, things are shifting. Campaigning has meant that people are beginning to realize that we have to do something. Um, and now, if you watch British television, there is a little bit more diversity. You will see the occasional blackface third guy from the lead actor. You might get a dead body on a slab in the there are, basement. There are, in the basement. There are many more uh, black and brown news readers and weather forecasters. Yeah. We're good at that. Um, and pretty soon, in a minute, we're going to have some more black and brown leads. And Sanjeev Baskar just did a lead in a television cop procedural, which is great. And um, I was one of the suspects in Broadchurch this year. My family thought it was me. Thanks a lot, family. <laughs> um, but um, it is changing. But it's going to be a while. Um, but the way it's going to change is if my friend Pat Young says this amazing thing, that the pickers and deciders, the people who pick, the people who pick and decide what programs get made, how they get cast, how they're directed, how they're produced, how they're script edited, if the pickers and deciders change, if the demographic of those people change behind the scenes, you'll see effortless change on the screens. You know, I, what I like about your approach is that you always come with solutions. So you, have, uh, you were the one who advocated ring-fenced money, and today you talked about tax breaks. Yeah. But can I take a step back? And we all know that representation of the society on television is far from where it should be. Why do you think that is the case? Why, where does it stem from? That's a really hard question. And for I know. That, I'm going to need one of those sweets that's under okay, your Okay, I'll bribe you. Thing. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am bribing Sir Lenny Harry on a stage. Thank you very much. These are fantastics. Oh. Hard work. You, you, you can answer. You, you can start this. answering and I'll, you know. I'm not answering shit without a fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough for now. Okay, good. Oh, this is the octopus one. <laughs> I think I might um, take as one. I, as, well. as I just said, um, you know, as I say, Rome wasn't built in a day, although I've seen some of the buildings and it looks like it was. <laughs> um, these things take time. Uh, 
Greg Dyke, who used to be the DG of um, the BBC, said in the early 90s that the BBC would he was hideously white. And here we are in 2017. It's changed a little bit. Um, and across the industry, there are some changes. Marvin, we've got Marvin at Sky. Anne Mensah is also head of drama at Sky. There's a few people at the BBC. The industry is, is changing. You go to a meeting now, and you might see some black and brown people in the meeting with you, a person with a, a disability. You might see some various other minorities, but it's, it's slow. It's like turning around an enormous oil tanker. It takes ages. Uh, no, no, thank you. I'll wait for the next hard question. But um, I believe that things are changing. But things like ring fencing money for uh, BAME producers uh, and productions, and also if they just did tax breaks, and remember these things come from the top, so nothing is going to come without policy, nothing is going to come without legislation, nothing is going to come without lobbying politicians and saying, what about this? Is this a good idea? Would this solve something? Because all the semantics in the world about diversity and inclusion and representation are not going to solve anything unless the people at the top decide that they want it to happen. So if you're a boss and you open your door and look out at your office where you work and it's all white, able-bodied men, you've got some work to do. No, I'm not a boss, and you know where, who I am? I feel like Speaking this, is a, this, is a circle of, this is a circle of trust, so I can basically stand up and say, I am Ali May, I am brown, I'm in, TV, I'm in the TV industry, and I am very underworked. That's who I am at the moment. And I think this is the story with You're a underworked. lot of us, underworked. How long have you been in the business? 11 years. 11 years. What was your training? Uh, literature, journalism, writing, all the shebang. Did you go to university? Yeah. Which one? Brunel. I did my master's at Brunel. Master's in journalism? Creative writing. Master's in creative writing. So you're a creative writer as well as a journalist? Yeah. I try, I, I, try not to, I, I try not to combine the two, though. When I'm doing journalism, I try not to get too creative. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, yeah. So, um, and you want to be on the telly? I have been for uh, a lot. Uh, is this going to be a mentoring on a stage? I'm loving this. Where do we begin? Ali Mae. So, this is a really good place to pitch your idea for a TV show, by the way. I don't know about you, but I'd be, I'd be here pitching like a Sabadam Beach now. Um, well, you know, I think it's hard for everybody. You're not the only person who says this to me. Of course. When I went to, um, when I was at Parliament. No, the reason I'm telling you this is oh. because you are our ambassador, and I am using one little example to basically illustrate what I'm seeing around with my peers, people who work really hard, they're trying to, you know, break into the industry. Some, like me, have a lot of experience, some don't any, ha any experience, and they're just trying to, you know, I don't need training, as you said, I need work. Yeah, I think if you've, I think if you've got experience and you're in the middle, I, I often, I often um, I've been asked to talk at various things and I say, Use the people you've got, you know, if you've got BAME people and they're kind of stuck or they've hit a glass ceiling, promote them. You know, if they need a bit of retraining, retrain them, but promote them. Use the people that have got the experience and can pass that experience down. Training and initiative is great, but I think if there's no training without a job, well, without a job what's the point? No training without a job, I think. Um, I think that, and privilege the people you've got, and it's easy. That's an easy thing to do if you run a company. But it, I think you have to lead by example. So all of the bosses have to get together and lead by example and start thinking there's a better way to do this. And also, it's, it makes sense to have more flavor in the room. Diversity gives you flavor. If it's all one taste, you Which flavor towards. will you take now? Oh, I'll, I'll have one of the long, pointy ones. Great. Guys, can you turn the lights on the audience? Let's have a quick look at the room. Let's. I need to see your faces. And I'm going to, I have a little That's task for you. you. Uh, Some women here. <laughs> if Where are my gay people at? Cool. Hello. Nice to see you. Now, if you are not a woman, and if you are not brown, and if you are not disabled, please stand up. I.e. all the white men in the room, please. Gentlemen. We love you. Don't worry about it. No, no, don't worry. It's, it's all about love. Please right, guys, stay, stay there. Damn. Stay Again? standing. Stay standing. Look around you. You are the ones that we need to really get in the game. 
please now walk to the first person sitting down next to you, take a selfie. Can you show the template, please? Take a selfie with the person who's sitting down. Who's... It's take a selfie with a minority day. Exactly. Hurl yourself into this, people. It's good. Take a selfie, and this is a template. You can, you can tweet that, and Lenny and I will retweet every we'll tweet. We'll retweet everything. We will retweet everything. And then everything. go to work and do it. The guys in the canteen and on security are going to love that. And we are gonna, we're going to do a selfie with all of you guys. Lenny, can you stand up? I can. Get the people in. Everybody move in, because we need to take a picture <laughs> with you. Move in. Come to the middle. Come in the middle. This is like a Bay City Rollers reunion concert. You need to move in the middle so we can get you in the shot. Go on, do it. Tilt it so it looks like it was full. Chris Rock doesn't have to put up with this shit. <laughs> okay. Well, Lenny Harry does. That's a really good picture. That's a good picture. So, ladies and gentlemen, basically today... Ali May is a brilliant journalist and creative writer and he'd like to work for you. That too. But I want all of us... Go to, to him on Twitter <laughs> and get his contact details from that. My name is Lenny Henry, Tax Breaks for Diversity. Um, you can read about it in the Financial Times and The Guardian. And um, I've loved this today. And you're an incredible, lovely, sexy inquisitor. And um, I'd like you to introduce me to the guy who did my voice in, in Iran, because I owe him I some can, money. I can try, I can try. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lenny. And ladies and gentlemen, please join the Diversity Revolution. We need all of you to change the face of TV. And it's in dire state. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. OK. Go ahead. We're doing pictures now. <laughs> it's like a wedding. Move in. Can everybody move in? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, for that gentleman as well. Thank you very Enjoy much. Enjoy the rest of your can. Thank you, peace. Thanks a lot.